I'm uh, Terry Rosenberry. I'm a professor here in the Department of Neuroscience at Mayo Clinic Jacksonville. These agents have been around since World War II. Uh, they were an extension of some of the old chemical mustard agents that were used in World War I, but they turned out to be much, much more toxic. Uh, fortunately, they've never been used, even though several countries, including the United States, have stockpiled large amounts of them. Currently, we're trying to reduce our stockpiles, but there's still quite a few floating around in the world, and the concern is they might fall into the hands of terrorists and be used against either military or civilian targets. Not long after these agents became known and, and uh, their toxicity became apparent, uh, for example, they uh, cause flaccid muscle paralysis and they cause uh, seizures in the central nervous system and uh, they can cause death too if a sufficient amount accumulates. There's a couple of examples of where these have been used. Uh, one was in the 1980s when Saddam Hussein used these weapons as part of his war with, uh, with Iran uh, and it was these types of weapons that were included in the weapons of mass destruction that were so uh, important in, uh, in that uh, uh, effort to go to war with Iran. But they also can be used by small terrorist groups. The most outstanding example is the Am Shamrikio group, uh, which used uh, these chemical weapons in the subway attack in Tokyo in the early 1990s, uh, which resulted in uh, the deaths of several passengers on the subway train during that attack. About 60 years ago, uh, and, and one antidote was found that worked to some extent with some of these chemical warfare agents. They would actually reverse the blockade of the enzyme that caused uh, the problem. And uh, it's currently part of a soldier's chemical weapons protection kit. But these, uh, these pharmacologic agents are not useful for some organophosphates. They simply don't work. And they also are only able to work after the individual's already been partially poisoned. So they can reverse the toxicity, but they can't prevent the toxicity from forming in the first place. Uh, the target first needed to be identified, and that turned out to be an enzyme that's very important in uh, the transmission of impulses between muscles and nerves and between some nerves themselves. Uh, this neurotransmitter is called acetylcholine, and the target uh, was uh, of these chemical warfare agents was an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase, which breaks down acetylcholine as a normal part of neurotransmission. And when this enzyme is blocked, the acetylcholine accumulates and it causes these adverse physiological responses that can result in death. What we're trying to do is to design new strategies that would block the chemical warfare agents from ever inactivating the acetylcholinesterase and not have to depend on reversing the toxicity once it's already occurred. It's important to have protection available and uh, we'd like to think that the, the kinds of drugs that we're hoping to develop would provide additional protection so if there is some use of these agents uh, it, could be, uh, it could be useful. Time frames are difficult to predict. How quickly would, would we be able to go through this stepwise process and actually reach a, a practical drug? Uh, we're probably talking five to 10 years. But when you view that in the perspective of not having any new drugs for the past 60 years, uh, we think it's an effort that's well worthwhile.